Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another tintillating, stintillating, whatever the hell I just said, show for all your one-stop shop for all your mixed martial arts, your martial arts, health, fitness, motivational needs. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the only podcast within the more of the same network that deals with this type of thing. We shoot the shit. We have fun. And in the process, we want to smarten up the fans. Yes, this is, ladies and gentlemen, the one and only the yin and the yang. And I, of course, ladies and gentlemen, am still your lifelong residential martial artist and possibly the greatest podcaster on planet Earth. Why? Because if I don't believe in it, how would you believe in it? Right? Well, ladies and gentlemen, on today's episode, the theme is assorted bullshit. Yes, exactly what I just said, assorted bullshit. If you don't want people to think you're stupid, then don't do stupid shit. Ladies and gentlemen, I have found somebody worse than the dick guy. Worse than those two twins. Oh my God, have I got a name for you. Evolution sales are going to shit. I lose my shit over people who are bad for the martial arts world. A meeting of legends. That's some awesome shit. And on some real shit. We have Reclaiming You, Q&A, and much more. And ladies and gentlemen, speaking of bullshit, let's bring out and introduce the king himself, the master of bullshit. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can give him a proper introduction, since we can't play ACDC anymore, we're just going to pick new themes every week. Why? Because, hell, I get a kick out of it. So here's his theme of this week. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, he is the NFL hating, chicken palm satiating, money inheriting inflating. Ladies, get your applications ready because he's single but up for dating. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he is the original angry American scream machine himself. Larry, I hate you all because I can and I have fuck you money more me. I, uh, first of all, I, I do like that theme. Thank you very much. I do. They were, uh, they were fun. Are you Luke or are you Butch? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm Luke because my father would be Butch. Oh, now. <laughs> I think it only That's makes sense. funny. That's fine. Okay. I can understand that. That was good. I thought you were going to say that I was Butch. But okay. <laughs> fine. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're Jameson. Throwing these headphones down right now. What? Wait, wait, what happened? We just started. We're less. Th- we're just over three minutes into this episode, and already well, he's really upset. We really have to go back into this. Not even five seconds into the show, he's already making fun of me. He's over three, three minutes, minutes, I said. Three, three minutes. Whatever. Then just, Jeremiah, shut the hell up. You don't talk anyway, so it don't matter. Anyway, how um, dare you call me Jameson? Oh, I don't, wait till you're. Wait until your theme song next week. I want to choose a good one for you. <laughs> I don't hate the world. I do have I do have fu money, but I certainly don't hate the world. There's you a hate the world. So. There's a lot I'm not crazy about, but uh, but you know I survive and and I get along. So, but uh, welcome everyone to the Yin and the Yang podcast. Uh, as Anthony said, we are the only show on the network that talks mixed martial arts, martial talks. arts, health, wellness. Excuse me that I kept my Brooklyn heritage. Thank you very much. Wow. Wow. Good grief. You threw yours off the boat. Why does it have to be a boat? What are you trying to say? I'm not an immigrant, you know. I want papers. I want paperwork. Yeah, thank you very much there, Donald Trump. Anyway, so (laughs) uh, before we start the program, uh, allow me to just say one thing. And this is to uh, a couple of things here, just to start off here. Uh, first and foremost, I found out that I had a cohort of mine uh, who was a volunteer at my grind. Um, he's a great man uh, who passed on at the age of 91 years old. Um, Robert Harrison it was a great um, mentor to me. Uh, he was a really good man. He was a World War II veteran, uh, a devout Catholic, uh, you know, he, family man. And uh, he passed on 
uh, this past week, and I, I had found that out, and uh, everybody at the job is just really devastated, and I just want to send my condolences to his family. Thank you, Bob, for really mentoring me and giving me the greatest piece of advice that I've ever received in the grind, which is simply, and I think anybody and everybody could use this. He uh, saw me and he said, kid, he goes, just understand something before you uh, suit up there. There will be days when you're the hydrant and there will be days when you're the dog. Well, apparently I've been the, the hydrant more than the dog as of late, but that's a different story. So the second thing um, I want to say before we start the show is we are actually in the cusp or at least soon to be of a massive hurricane known as Florence. And I'm not talking about Florence from the Jeffersons. Um, I am talking about Florence. Hurricane Florence is coming to the Carolinas around that area and uh, maybe parts of Georgia and especially in the southeast and uh, we pray for our fans out there. We have our good friend Yari, who Larry, I just found out, I just talked to him. He's actually in Florida. He's not affected by it. Well, that's good. Uh, he and his family are safe, so I'm glad that they're marked safe. And all of you folks down there by the Carolinas, um, we, you know, and by George, parts of Georgia, uh, maybe some parts of Virginia, some parts of Florida, just be safe out there. Um, take care of yourselves. And we are certainly praying for you. Yeah, right? It's going to be an ugly one. Now, isn't there supposedly like there's like two or three more that are brewing or something? Yeah, it's uh, there's there's a couple more behind it. That's uh, these last couple of years, man. It's it's been tough for hurricane seasons, but we'll survive. We'll get through it. It's all part of nature. You know, this happens. Just the 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 planet goes through cycles. So, well, uh, I mean, it better uh, not fuck up a good time because in ten days from now, I'm going to be out of here for a little while. So I'm going to be uh, cruising, man. Oh. It, it, ho- hopefully, it won't affect the cruise. You know, hopefully not. Uh, God bless you, man. I would never go on a cruise. So, well, we were supposed to go to one uh, next month with the uh, Jericho Rockin' uh, cruise. You would have seen an actual. I heard he's actually bringing supposedly. Uh, the NWA title there. He wants Cody to actually defend the title there. Well, it's a Cody, possibility. If Cody's on the show, I don't I remember if Cody. I know Brandy's going to be on the boat. I don't She's going to be on the boat. I, I think Cody, Cody will be there. He um, well, since he won the title, he may be there actually. Yeah, uh, he's in Jericho's in negotiations with that. Well, I mean, they got you know, it's the Alpha Club versus the Bullet Club out there on the open seas. We're going to look basically. We're going to see Jericho. Omega Part 2, as we saw it all in, Jericho Jump and Kenny Omega. Uh, but it will be Chris Jericho and the Young Bucks against uh, Kenny Omega, Marty Skrull, and Cody. So, actually, not maybe not necessarily I'm, defending the title, but Cody... I'm really, will- I'm really glad... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I am really glad that Cody and Jericho are guys who actually were not, I mean, especially Cody, he was only seen as mid card status. And he basically just said, you know, fuck you guys. I'm going to go out there. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to show you that I'm worth more than mid card status. And I'm really glad that he did. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't consider it him saying, fuck you. I just think he, yes, he was frustrated and he felt, and he proved that yes, his worth in his name uh, is definitely more than what the WWE was pushing. Again, I wouldn't consider it a, a, a fuck you. Uh, the door always is open for him to come back. I don't think he will anytime soon because right now he he's won't. Showing, no, not at all. He's because showing he... him and the Bucks and Kenny Omega, for that matter, are showing that you can make a very successful career um, outside of WWE right now, and they're riding high. You know, especially Cody and the Bucks after All In. So. Uh, well, things he's, he's really proving it that he's blazing his own trail like his old man did, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, it's, he not only gives, um, you know, gives shout-out to his father, but, you know, he also constantly gives shout-outs to his brother as well. So, you did, know, he recognizes what Goldust has done for the comp- for the business. Did you also hear that uh, DDP worked that night and all in for free? He took nothing from him. There you go. You know, he, he literally said, he said, as as, I think that, you know, DDP did it also because, you know, uh, Dusty was his mentor, mm-hmm. one of his mentors. So he did it for his next generation. And that's really that's mighty, you know, uh, generous and, and very, very 
appreciative, uh, you know, to show that DDP, you know, is not just about money. He's really about passion. That whole you know, show was about that. I think so. I believe it was, so. It was I, as, I finally got to see the rest of it. Okay, good. The you know, as the announcer said, it was really more kind of a you know, just a a, a showing of love and passion for the business. Wasn't meant to to take anybody on. Wasn't meant to show anybody up. It was just meant to be like, look, we love this business. We love everything about it, and you know, we're going to put on a, a labor of love. Four, and that's really what it was. Well, with the exception of the dick guy, the, I mean, it was a great show. Well, I mean, it really was. And it, that, that, that that silly bullshit. Oh, and speaking of, speaking of. 11,000 people I, can't be wrong. Well, the 11,000 people uh, are crazy enough to go watch this bullshit. And, uh, sp- and being the fact that the theme is bullshit this week, assorted bullshit, allow me to disseminate, okay, uh, the first order listen, of listen, business listen. here. Do whatever you want to do over there in that studio. Just don't let me know about it. Just clean up afterwards. Don't let Jeremiah have to get... Oh, disseminate. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, never mind. Okay. Are we done? I, I missed. Are we done? No, all right. Well, the, you know what? Now that you're done, allow me to speak. Shut up. Anyway, that, that, am I allowed to talk to the boss like that? Jeremiah? Jeremiah! Not in a couple More of episodes, I- you won't. Stupid Not after we... Idiot. Not after we renegotiate. That's right. This is episode 48 and fans, two episodes from now, I may not be on this network anymore, so I'm getting it. I'm all in for taking down the boss. And until then, until I get a renewed contract, all right, um, you know, we'll see what, what will happen here. Because I have produced 48 episodes of quality for you. Guess this one counts. <laughs> Are you ready? Sir, now, let's... Get the show on the road. The first order of assorted bullshit that we have this week is I have a brand new name that I can add to this video game wrestling bullshit. And by the way, I have a new name for it, by the way. Um, It is now called Outlaw Mud Show Wrestling. Okay, Outlaw Mud Show Video Game Bullshit Wrestling. That's the full name of it. But... When you talk about people like the Dick Guy, Joey Ryan, the Bucks, I don't really have much of a problem. Kenny Omega, I do. Now I have two new fucking people that have literally, oh, God, I I don't even know how to describe how stupid this shit is. Right next to the invisible hand grenades, the breaking out into the middle of the dance routines, okay? I, I mean... Have you ever heard of the name Sammy Callahan? Absolutely. Who hasn't? Okay. He is another one of these fucking jugular jackasses, all right, who I've seen a video of him. He Within a match, he wanted somebody to take a staple gun and staple his nuts three times. Are you sure? Yes. I am sure. I don't know where I saw this. I saw it on YouTube. I don't know exactly what the details were, but this guy earlier in his career had some. All right. He was also, by the way, the guy who took a baseball bat and was it bashed Eddie Edwards with this? Well, that was that was a terrible botch. I mean, fucking moron. Well, that it's like that was a botch. I mean, that's a botch. You, You can't. That's a botch. That was a total botch. If I was Eddie Edwards, when we got to the back, I'd have fucking taken that baseball bat and you know, bashed him across the head with it. They, look, for what it's worth, Impact took that moment and ran with it, which is good. You know, it's, you know how some of these guys are, especially old school thinking guys. You know, something like that happens, you, you kind of roll with it. And Eddie, as much as, yeah, his career was in serious jeopardy, it was a terrible, terrible uh, uh, incident. You know, had his uh, ocular socket basically destroyed. Could have ended his career. Um, but, you know, sometimes shit happens in the ring. And I, I feel like even something like that kind of is, is like a work hazard. Like, ah, it happened. It sucks. But you kind of move on from it. Um, I, I would like to think that Sammy Callahan and Eddie Edwards talked about it and... Sammy apologized. I know on, on camera, he sure as hell didn't apologize. On TMZ, he didn't apologize. And the way that his gimmick is now, 
He's certainly not apologetic about it. But like you even just said, early on in, in his career, he did this spot with the staple gun, which is most likely in combat zone wrestling, which I've seen someone staple another man's lip to the top turnbuckle, like legitimately. So, you know, you can't blame him for stuff that he did early in his career. You know, you got to kind of base what he's doing now. Wasn't he also the guy that supposedly took like a power bomb or something like that onto a ladder and he just no sold it and just got up? Um, I don't know. I can't I can't comment on that. It, there was something about him taking a power bomb from like uh, uh, the top of a scaffold or some shit like that. Uh, he took the bump and everybody was went, oh, and then all of a sudden he just got right back up and just like like it was nothing Like he didn't even sell it. I mean, I, I think he is known as a hothead. Okay. So unless something, well, if you're a f- and, and if you're that stupid to basically do anything like that to yourself, to hurt yourself, and to basically take years off of your wrestling career by pulling bullshit stunts like this that will never go on TV, they'll never mean anything. These people laugh at you. They're not laughing at what you're doing. They're laughing at you for being that stupid because you're an outlaw mud show wrestler. Bullshit wrestling, video game type crap. Okay, the, the second person, by the way, I also wanted to mention is some dumb son of a bitch in the Philippines. First of all, I didn't even know in the Philippines that they had professional wrestling. Did you did you watch this one on YouTube? This stupid, blatant dumbass sets himself on fire and jumps off and cracks himself like a breaks like some guy over the fucking like lays a guy out on three tables and sets himself on fire and jumps off and gives him like a fucking like one of those like uh uh kamikaze splashes or something i've seen that um you know okay. that's you can't be that dumb i mean really that's hard that's that ultra violent wrestling that is a whole subgenre of wrestling that oh, I don't understand. No, it's not. Uh, the police don't call it wrestling. It's absolute stupidity it's, is what it was. Look, I, I agree with I don't get it. Um, I've been to one of these shows, too. Like, you know, it's, you and I, you and I have been in the wrestling business, okay? You and I know we've been in a ring. You know what it's about, okay? <clears throat> Rippo's been in the ring. You know what it's about. The thing about it is, is that We've done some hardcore stuff before, okay? Have have we ever tried to set my? Well, oh, wait a minute. Actually, I did. Uh, well, someone did try. Yeah, Killer did try to set uh, Dream Ash on fire. Have you ever seen anybody shot? Well, oh, wait. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, okay. Have you ever said? Okay, now we. I've gotten chair shots to the head. You've gotten chair shots to the back. Okay. What did they hurt? Yes. A lot of these moves are intended to hurt, but here's the thing, and, and Dutch Mantel said it a long time ago. A long time ago, we we were barely touching and hurting one another, and people believed it. Nowadays, we hit each other for real, or they hit each other uh, as hard as possible, and they don't believe it. It's, you know, that, again, with that hardcore, not hardcore, it's beyond hardcore, that ultra-violent wrestling like i said that is a whole different level it's a whole different fan base it's like a it's almost like like, like the juggalos who follow insane clown posse it's like exactly it it's it's weird i don't get it i'm not a fan of it personally i look i used to be i won't lie when all that first started happening in the late 90s and early 2000s i was like whoa you know Guys going through barbed wire, thumbtacks, glass. You know, even I was, you know, had a little bit of that bloodthirst. Um, but then after a while, I was like, all right, this is getting kind of weird. Then they started doing with the with the gusset plates and you know syringes through the through the cheeks. Uh, was at that spot with the um, with the wooden skewers in in the, in the head. Um, you know, Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose took a skill saw. To the forehead in CZW, so he, oh he was in CW, CCW. He's a C-Z-W? former CW. He's a former CZW champion. Actually, a lot. So is Drew Gulak, and a couple other guys were in Combat Zone. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, and that was. I mean, that was ultra. That's really where it all. Like I said, I saw someone staple another man's bottom lip to the top turnbuckle. 
Legitimately. (sighs) You know, it's, again, I don't get it, but there is a fan. When I went to that show, I went to Game Changer Wrestling. Before I realized it was was ultra-violent, I went to GCW, and it was just... I mean, the be in that atmosphere of just guys going through light tubes, uh, the barbed wire. I saw someone actually put a fish hook through someone else's cheek and snap Marum off the top rope with a fishing pole. I mean, the the fi- it was a it was a tournament. The finals they actually wrestled on concrete blocks. They actually laid out the mat and put concrete blocks became the mat. So that's what they were wrestling on. It's, so all the <sighs> and then the cops showed up, which I thought was hysterical. But you know, and I'm standing not five feet from a guy whose back is completely sliced up, and he's just kind of standing there, just like ready to start doing autographs. This is stupid. I, it's I'm, absolutely I, like, sickening. It's well, mortifying, actually. Like I said, I don't get it. Uh, there's, but to be fair, as far as I know. As hardcore as it is, as ultra violent as as it is, I've yet to hear anyone get killed in one of these matches, which is good. Um, but well, it's, that's gonna that's gonna be coming soon at some point. I hope because, not. Because, well, let's put it this way: with the way that things are going, I mean, look, it's like what's the difference between that and somebody like New Jack going in to stab somebody for real during well, a match? Because New Jack is insane. It's insane. Okay, well, that, and so are these people who are going to wrestle in fucking concrete blocks and for fluorescent light tubes. You're not, you're killing yourself slowly is what you're doing. I mean, there's no, then there should be no difference between that and some guy getting hit helmet to helmet in, in football or a guy being punched as hard as possible with bare knuckle. I, I you know fight. I've seen that uh, in a wrestling you know? match. So right. and I I don't understand that this is stupidity. It's like for you to go out there and say that you're a professional wrestler. You know, you're a professional stuntman. To all these people who do this shit for real and and they do this to to basically get some aroused crowd of probably 2 300 people who aren't going to score that night when they go home, all right? Listen, this is nuts. It's mortifying. It's sickening. I there's a difference between when we were doing Psycho Circus in NYWC. Did, did you know? Did you see anybody get hurt to that extent? The most that you saw was a guy being power bombed onto a bed of barbed wire, and and they didn't even go further than that. There were things that they were doing to one another that was crazy. That was considered hardcore. Granted, it was 14 years ago, but. Hardcore is hardcore, but now these people are taking it to another level to a point where it's it's absolutely stupid, absolutely stupid. Look, I, I'm not I'm not who am I to judge? I'm certainly can't judge. It's not for me. I'm not. I wouldn't be going to the shows. Uh, but like I said, it's definitely it's got a following, and it's it's out there. It's not for us, but it's for somebody. Well, here's the thing. Even though it's a place where probably 100 people, 200 people gathered to see a show, please also bear in mind of one thing. All these people have cameras. All these people have video. All these people have social media. And what's happening is they're basically putting it out there for people to see. So it's not – no one can say that that's secular in any manner because it's not. It just isn't. You know, And it's ridiculous to see – People get legitimately hurt. That's just insane. And I'm telling you, the way things are, somebody's going to die of something. The, you think the mass transit incident was bad? It's going to get worse. Well, that's a little different. That's that's someone purposely trying to almost kill somebody. Uh, here, it's it's like it's weird. It's I, I kind of saw him not backstage, but you know, I saw a lot of these wrestlers after that show I went to, and it's. It's like any other show. They just go out there, you know, do what they got to do to each other. And then, you know, in the back, they're like, hey, good match. You know, you know, they're, it's not like they purposely hate each other. It's just what they do. Again, who are we to judge? We just, you know, it's not for us. So, but it's it's for somebody. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, this... 
this hardcore wrestling is ridiculous. This video game outlaw mud show bullshit wrestling is ridiculous. <laughs> I, you know, can we just please restore some sort of sanity and go back to our regularly scheduled broadcasting at some point, please? Because it's it's just out insane. It's outrageous. It's like, oh, but that's who am I to judge? Who am I to talk? I'm not in this business anymore. You're not in this business anymore. It's if it's what the people want. Hey, I, I have nothing to say all except for what I say here. I'm not going to go out and try to change the world. Uh, you know, there are people who are trying to do that, whether it be for good or bad or whatever. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Um, you know, and because obviously the wrestling business is evolving. All right. Always and is. Whether, Always whether is. it's good or bad, is that it, pun intended? it doesn't matter. Uh, oh, now, uh, yes, it is. Because that's a perfect segue game to our next topic of assorted what bullshit you i like it which yeah i know that that was not planned that was not planned all right <sighs> like 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 uh, like some of the most wanted children in this world that was not planned you know larry that was bad that was bad that was about as bad as wrestling uh a blow-up doll Look, I'm just coming down, coming you off know, the pneumonia. We, we, were, we were getting serious with this, and then all of a sudden you broke out an invisible hand grenade is what you just did. Hey, listen, that spot, holy cow. You endorse this shit, don't you? It's like, you endorse It's it. like, did you see ah. um, Cornette when he, when, he, when he blew up on Dan Barry? Yes. <laughs> yes. That was, that poor, was wild. Poor Dan That Barry. was pretty wild. You know? So, hey, my man Corny. And speaking of Corny, I'm going to get Corny in Philly later uh, in the week. And I bah, 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 bah. we'll save that for the end of the show. Okay. Um, so, uh, which, by the way, Larry, I have a special announcement that will entice you to come with me to a certain program uh, that you'll find very fun. But anyway, the point is. As I was doing a perfect segue, you fucking had to break out into a dance routine, didn't you? All right? All right. And now, let me say this before Larry interrupts me again. Evolution. The all women's all. Okay? little Brooklyn for you. I haven't lost it. I haven't lost it, Larry. <laughs> women's pay-per-view in the National Veteran Memorial Coliseum. The show is actually not selling as good as people actually expected it to. So I'm beginning to wonder why. Do you have um, any thoughts? You know, yeah, it's it's from what I've heard. I don't oh, know. Now, how- before you say a word, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but hold on a second. Jeremiah, get me the the uh, what Mr. Mormon sent me on my memo today in the uh, personal computer. Am I allowed to speak wrestling? Because, you know, apparently this is, this is his um, – Larry, uh, give me a second. This is his uh, garbage time, you know? Like, you know how, like, in a game, you know, garbage time is, like, when the last few minutes when it doesn't matter anymore, you know, just it's the useless time during the – am I allowed? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I don't want to get into trouble yet. If I get sued, I'm going to kick your ass over there. All right. Um, Larry, uh, he, he can't get his shit together. So am I allowed to speak about wrestling? Uh, because apparently I was given a cease and desist uh, letter – from the offices of the more of the same network because there's a new show called talk not talk talk more wrestling m-o-h-r talk more wrestling talking and, more wrestling oh it's changed now that you changed the title it's always okay. been talking more wrestling for the one okay, episode because no, i was no, 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 six no. So i couldn't even do the second one allow me to, to correct it it's talking more wrestling so since talking more wrestling is what it's all about. Actually, you know what you should do? You should change it to that. T A W K I N G. Talking more wrestling. You right? know, I, I heard the mic was on. I heard what, what garbage time. You yeah, know, I it can, is garbage time. This is garbage time for you. You know, your contract you is up. Take care of the, rest of, your, of the rest of the shows. Your contract is up in two episodes. I don't have to renew it. Oh, you don't have to, huh? What about the legions of fans that we have gotten throughout the entire nation, possibly around many, many nations around the world? What about those people, huh? You don't think these people count? The the, the commandos don't count? The militants don't count, huh? Is that what you're trying to say? No wonder you hate the people. You don't care about this show. This show is nothing 
but leisurely hobby time for you. It's garbage time. Ah, Is it not- I love the people, but that does not mean that I have to like the people. That's why this is a podcast for the people. So to go back on the topic at hand, evolution, uh, I am actually, and I will allow this week for us to talk about professional wrestling. Talk. Uh, Evolution, I'm actually, I mean, I don't know how bad or what's considered bad sales. Um, I am a little shocked to hear that Evolution is not selling too well right now. I would have thought with... The fan base on Long Island with, you know, how NXT does amazingly well in Brooklyn, how basically the women have putting on a great show. I'm a little shocked that sales aren't as strong as I guess people were expecting. Uh, also, though, I-, I will admit, at least up until about a week and a half ago, there was only one match signed. So maybe some people are waiting because there are there will be title matches, the the Raw Women's Title, SmackDown Women's Title, NXT Women's, NXT UK Women's Title, and the finals of the May Young Classic too. Wait, 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 wait! Did you just say that the NXT Women's Title will be defended? It will be, yes. Oh, 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 oh my god! Oh my god! Does that mean? Wait a minute. Does that mean? Yes, the, that the pirate the, princess. The, 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 my future wife will be there. Yes, she will be there to drop the title oh, oh to whoever god. she ends oh up fighting. God. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! This is great! Oh my lord! Oh! 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 oh. You okay? You want Elizabeth. you need a cigarette? Elizabeth, that fucking smoking's bad for you, Elizabeth. The, I feel it's the big one, honey. Oh my lord! Oh, oh, she's gonna be there. Oh, she will. Oh, um, oh. Of course, she will be outclassed by Little Miss Bliss and the goddess of the WWE. Uh, as of right now, there's only two matches signed. Don't uh, you dare say that. Trish Stratus versus Alexa Bliss and Lita versus Mickey James. Now, okay. oh. all right. I was just gonna say, going into this. I think everyone, I thought a lot of people were expecting there were going to be a lot of one-off matches. You know, just kind of Hall of Famers or Legends coming in. uh, Kind of getting there for as hard work as Trish and Lita, Beth Phoenix, you know, all of them did to get the women to where they are today. uh, Outside of three-minute matches, outside of brawn panty matches. You know, I think it's nice... And I was expecting to see them come out kind of like they did at the Royal Rumble. Give them their appreciation. Uh, but I'm still shocked. Yeah, the tickets aren't going as well, especially on a Long Island um, crowd. Okay, now, be, me being the consummate professional that I am, uh, I am actually on StubHub right now, and I am going to Evolution Tickets. And the Section 200s, you can actually get a ticket as low as $30 each right now. Uh, if you go to the 100s, you can get a ticket for anywhere between a hundred and two dollars to a hundred seventy dollars. Um, right now, if you sit at section 117 or 103, which is right in front of the ring, it's about a hundred seventy dollars. Well, um, here, but that actually, if anything, four hundred seventeen dollars for a, hold on uh, section 117. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That, talking about StubHub, though, actually works in the favor of WWE because that means those tickets were already sold. Well, exactly, which is a good thing. But exactly, what I'm saying yeah. is that if these people can't go, uh, I mean, I'm just giving you a range of prices, No, folks. no, I um, know, but that's going to happen anyway. People are just going to buy tickets purposely to resell them. So it's- you can sit at Section 15 right now for $150 All right. a ticket. Um, section 17, which is the loge for those of you who don't know what loge seats are, that it's not on the floor, but a little bit above, uh, section 17, which is right in front of the ring is $558. So, you know, it sounds like some seats are next to the stage. Some are across which the fucking stage. Which ironically, if you sit next on, on row F, which is where the wrestlers are coming down the ring, which Larry, I just might have to buy a ticket on row F so that when Kyrie Sagan comes down, I can actually have a wedding ring and propose well good thing um, we got the cheap seats up on top 
three hundred nine. You know, Larry, you are a cheapskate son of a bitch. No, I'm not you a had cheap. To use no. The bo- no, you know what you did? You called the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. <laughs> you called the guy who's a part of public relations, and you said, do you know who I am? I'm Larry Mormon. I'm the owner, the king, the guru of the more of the same network. All right. Um, I broadcast to thousands of thousands of people across the nation. I want tickets in a box right now. And you know what the guy did? He went, OK, OK, I'll get you tickets. OK, OK. And then that's where we're sitting right now. So, Larry, I'm actually sitting in a skybox with you, which is pretty interesting. You call cheap seats because you generally, with the amount of money you make, you sit around the front rows. But that's a little bit of a different story. But anyway, the point I was trying to get at before I was once again rudely interrupting, you're not going to get any too many more of these cards left, is that if I sit right by where the wrestlers walk down, I can sit in row uh, F, which is $395, uh, or four hundred dollars on either side, and I can get to see Kyrie Sane walk down the ring. Oh my god! Oh my god! It's getting completely, anyway, completely, completely undoing what evolution is meant to be. Let me ask you this though: Do you? I mean, do you feel? How can I put this? Do well, you feel I, evolution is going to be a good? I'm not going to say is it going to be a good show. We're not going to know till we see it. But is it a good thing where it's more one-offs? Having these legends, having these Hall of Famers come back versus all matches continuing a storyline. There'll be some. But. Okay. Let me ask you this. I think I that the reason why sales are going kind of slow is, first and foremost, actually, I agree with you for once. I think a lot of it has to do with the marketing. You've only announced one match. Okay. The, title, the other titles are going to be defended. Yes, I'm happy about that. However, when you announce Bliss – against Trish Stratus, that alone, just alone. Now, see, here's the thing. This is what I don't understand about the WWE Universe. Just that match or just the concept of having an all-women's WWE pay-per-view should be enough for people just to go out and buy tickets because it's a historical first. It's unique. It's all women on card. But let me also say this. You have a bit poor marketing because people don't really know what the solid matches are yet. You still have another month and a half before people will officially – Oh, there's still time. Okay, there's still time. I understand. However, let me ask you this. Do you think the WWE Universe is actually ready for a card, an entire pay-per-view with no men in it? Yes. Are they ready for it? I think so. Because – look – the way I don't I don't see it as you know well here let me put it this way like some of these top matches that we've gotten in the last few years Sasha versus Bailey at uh, the first NXT takeover um, Charlotte versus Sasha first ever Hell in a Cell uh, Becky. Uh, Becky Lynch with her heel turn recently. Um, you know, even Alexa Bliss, the way she's been in the ring, the 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 Royal Rumble. It's not to me. It's not that. Oh, you know, the women are putting on good matches. To me, it's oh, I'm seeing good matches that involve women. Like I don't really. It's weird. I don't really see it as oh, it's about time the women get their just due. No, let me let me rephrase that because it is time that they got their just due. But um, what I'm trying to get at is, it's. I think the show is being put on not just because they're women, but because these women can put on tremendous matches. Ember Moon is an amazing talent. Um, you know, just a lot of the women down in NXT put on better matches than the guys. So, to me, it's just going to be another wrestling show where we've always been dominant as all male shows. This one's just going to be all female. But so far, all these talents can go in the ring. Um, yes, only two matches have been announced. There's still two pay per views to get through. We got to get through Hell in a Cell and we got to get through Super Showdown in Melbourne, Australia. Once we get past those, then, <coughs> excuse me, um, then I think they're really going to kick it into high gear as far as promoting evolution. Well, after all this, I mean, even if the aftermath of evolution itself, here's a question for you. The next night is Raw, and then the night after that is SmackDown. What exactly do you do 
as far as the aftermath of the pay-per-view itself because you're not going to have a raw or smackdown with all women you're you know you're only going to speak of branches quote unquote of what had happened that night so unless i think that and i'm not saying have a, a raw smackdown with all women i'm just saying that you would have to now play off of that because now where do you go from here because do you have another one with all women the oh. next year I'm sure this is you, not, yeah, this is not going to be the only one. I think they're going to I think they're going to do a whole division, a whole show of just women. I also think they're going to announce new titles or secondary title or something because there has to be something, some element besides legends coming back or Hall of Famers coming back. That is you know, for this there has one. to be something that has to be unique about Evolution. The, you know? Look, as the first all women's pay per view, I don't have a problem with a lot of these one offs with Trish coming back, Lita coming back, any other legends coming back. Because as much as Trish and Lita really were part, like Trish and Lita were the very first women's main event on Raw. And they put on a hell of a match that night, if you remember it. Um, you know, that was the one when Lita came back from her neck surgery, Trish yes, had a broken yes. nose. Amazing match for well, early 2000s. Um, but they even Trish and Lita was still subjected to the you know the bra and panty matches and look it was the signs of the time. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm not saying it was wrong. Sex sold back then, and WWE is always on the forefront of whatever seems to be popular in pop culture. So again, I'm not complaining about it. But it's again like the Royal Rumble where you saw Kelly Kelly, Molly Holly, uh, Tori Wilson. I understand, right. You know, Joy Giovanni. I would love to see Joy I mean, she doesn't deserve to be in the ring, but I'd love to see her again. Um, you know, to see these women come back for evolution, to to basically see the results of their hard work, that's perfectly fine. Don't If yeah. they do another evolution, you're right. If they do future all-women's pay-per-views, well, I don't expect to see Trish at every one of these. But understand something. I also want to see a lot of these women pioneers get acknowledged Absolutely. like bring them to the stage and announce like each person like molly holly ivory uh you know people like that because i think that they deserve it you know even like layla you know layla l mm-hmm. um who was my friend on facebook um you know and i mean people like that they she's a fan of the retro gamers what they, that, did you have to rub that why do you have to always have to one-up me huh is there is there a reason for that do you always have to one up do I have to take this? Do I have to take this legally? I have to take this? Fuck. Anyway. Anyway, so as as I was saying, um, I would certainly hope that this will be a sold-out show because it would be a great indication that women have come a long way. They deserve it. They've worked hard, um, and they have, and I get to see Kyrie Sane. And we will be there, so we'll let you know how it is. Yes, we certainly will be. That will be one of our stops in the. Uh, I well, just when you thought we were out, we, uh, you know, they pull us back in tour. But anyway, the next thing here is some really awesome shit. Okay, all right, I like that. So we we went from outlaw shit to yeah, evolving shit to now awesome shit. I told you it's a sorted bullshit this week, right? I like it. I like it. A legend meets a legend this week. So I was at, on the, in the grind after hours, suited up, ready to go. And no, I will not discuss what I do uh, on my regular hours. He's bad. Uh, yes, exactly. Right. So I'm suited up, ready to go. And all of a sudden, in this uh, event that they held, I kid you not, out of nowhere, walking by, who do I see? Who? 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 I see Garth Algar himself. That's cool. Dana Carvey. Yes, yes. that was. I saw the picture. The yep. Dana Carvey, the guy who basically uh, was uh, Garth from Wayne's World. All right, uh, who played Ross, Ross Perot? Uh, I believe he was also uh, he George played, Bush uh, Senior. George Bush Senior. Yes. So he not gonna made, do it. Made, not going to do it. the economy. Um, now, now, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Now, the, the point is, <laughs> is that he's walking by, and uh, this is how he, this is how, what happened. I went up to him and I said, um, excuse me, Mr. Carvey, 
I said, hi. Um, I said, I just wanted to let you know I am a very huge fan of yours. And, um, I, you know, to meet a Saturday Night Live legend such as yourself, you – were amazing. He was and on when are, the show was great, and you are amazing. And when and I'll t- and I'll get to that in a second. And you're absolutely right. So you know what his, his response to me was? I'd like to get by now. <laughs> so remember when when uh, in Wayne's World? Remember when uh, Garth actually shocked the guy with a oh, stun classic, gun? Classic, classic. Right. So he said that line, and I was like, "Oh, I'm sorry." I said, "I didn't mean," and not remembering the line or where it came from. I said. I'm sorry. I said, he goes, no, no, no. He goes, I was just doing Garth Algar for you. And I'm <laughs> like, like, you see me, I'm literally speechless, which I know is very hard for me. And I'm just standing there. My mouth is open. I'm like, oh, my God, you did? I said, that's when you shocked the guy with the stun gun. He's like, party on, Wayne. I was <laughs> like, yes, yes. I was like, that is so cool. And he's like, I, I just, I shook his hand. He's like, would you like a picture with me? I'm like. Sure, of course. So he offered, not me. Really? Which wow. I didn't ask offered, and I he was looks, like, wow. I saw the photo. He looks good. Yeah, he looks really good. And I mean, uh, and we were talking Wayne's World. Uh, we were talking about the different impressions. He is funny. He did George Bush for me. <laughs> he did Ross Pearl for me, uh, <laughs> which, by the way, that could have been Dana Carvey last week. I don't know. Um, I, I, you know, I was just interviewing. All right. And. It was interesting because I felt it was like meeting him. He was so cool. And I couldn't believe like um, he was just funny in person. The guy, the people who sat with him in the table were laughing the entire time. <laughs> I mean, it tells you how good of a comedian he really is. Oh, absolutely. And yes, you are, Larry. Once again, for a record breaking second time on the show, I actually agree with you in one episode. Oh, yes. During his time. With Mike Myers, Rob Schneider, uh, Tim Meadows, Adam Sandler, Chris Farley, Victoria Jackson. Um, there was a, also an African American lady that was there. Oh, um, yeah, I know you're talking about. I forgot her name though. Is it Gail or? <sighs> I'm not going to remember. Well, you know who I'm talking about, right? Exactly. That crew was unstoppable. That that was like you're right. their peak. Yep. That was their peak. And it was the show to watch, and it was just unbelievable, you know? Oh, and the guy who did Stuart Smalley. I forgot what his name was. Daily uh, Affirmations. Oh, uh, what's this? Uh, the former uh, senator who got busted. Al Franken? For, yeah. Oh, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was awesome. That was their peak at that point. So, oh, and uh, let's not forget Phil Hartman. Yes. Right? The late, great Phil Hartman. So, I mean... He was part of that. And for those of you uh, millennials who are part of Larry's crew who don't know what uh, Saturday Night Live was when it was at its peak, please check it out. On I'm sure it's on YouTube and stuff. It was the the best, though, the best skit that was – they did like those Saturday Night Live commercials was Crotch Bat. I don't remember, remember Crotch that. Bat? No. Crotch Bat was one of these Nerf foam bats that you can smack people in the crotch with. It was the funniest Oh, wait, maybe I do ever. remember that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Good stuff. Are you ready, my friend? I'm always ready. Are you ready to reclaim yourself? Ooh, I do like these segments, yes. Well, you're going to like this one because uh, we're definitely, definitely going to uh, – to hit up on a very important subject. So, uh, fool in the back, do your job. All right, then. Okay, everybody. So, welcome back. To another episode of Reclaiming You. Now, this week is going to be a pretty interesting one. And simply because I had something that happened to me this past week in my one of my martial arts classes. And I asked my students, uh, what do you... I'm going to say one word and I want to see how everybody reacts. And my students were all ready. And, you know, I said, are you guys ready? And they're like, you know, yes, Sifu, right? So... I said, you guys, and now these are 
uh, students who are 12 to 17 years old. And I said, I'm going to say the word willpower. What does the word willpower mean to you? And I had uh, everybody was just sitting there. Nobody really knew, you know, what to say. And one of my students, my student Nathan, raised his hand. He says, uh, willpower is the will to have power, which everybody laughed. And, you know, I said, OK, I said, that's that's a funny one. I said, but seriously, guys, what is willpower to you? And one student said discipline. And I said, okay, give me, I said, let's go with discipline. What example of uh, willpower do you think is discipline? So one of my students basically says, well, willpower is like when you have to do your homework and, you know, you have to, you know, you have to control yourself or you have to have the willpower to do your homework, get it over with so you can do stuff that you like or to get through stuff that you hate and uh, then that way you can just you know go on to do the things that you love. And I said, okay, you guys, you, you, you gotten it wrong, okay? And I said, let me break the, the, the word down, okay? Let's take the word willpower. Let's break it in half. So the word will and the word power have two very, very uh, different meanings. But yet, what's interesting is that like the yin and yang, one cannot exist without the other, right? So um, allow me to say to everybody here, this is something that I believe can be applicable to everybody in your everyday life. It's not just about martial arts. It's not just about, you know, uh, health or fitness and stuff like that. It could be about anything, okay? So let's take the word willpower, okay? Ready? The word will. Will is an action, Power is a source. Okay, here's what's interesting about it. You have to have the will to gain power. All right. And the power would not be present if you don't have a will to gain that power. Right. So, again, will is an action and power is a source. So let me give you an example of how it applies to us. All right. We as human beings, we all have power inside us. And in order for uh, the power to move or to take action, we have to get the will to get that moving. Okay? I want you to think about something very simple. We all go into buildings every day. Okay? Uh, everything from our cars. Uh, everything from, you know, our cell phones, our uh, phones, our computers. Okay? All the building parts are there, just like us. We're all built together. You know, nobody came into this world saying that let's assemble this human right there. You came assembled, all right, into this world. Now, what's interesting is that you have a power inside of you to make you see, to make you, to have you hear, to have you smell, touch, uh, move. You can speak, right? So there's some inner power built inside us. And what happens is, we have to tap into the will to use it, okay? And it, let's think of a building, okay? Something or any building, all right? If the power wasn't connected and no wires are there to connect the power, we'd have an empty building, okay? But because we have a place, a source to get that power, all we need is a will to go over to the switch and flick it on, right? Now, same thing happens with us inside ourselves you have a will and you also have power in order for you to tap into the power you need to get to the will first okay the action can do two things you can either turn it on or turn it off okay we activate it in two ways you guys all right and gals out there it takes willpower to quit and it takes willpower to move forward you have two choices in life. Either you can you know, quit or you can move on, right? And that all depends on you. No one person is built the same, all right? Um, I'll give you an example. A lot of times you'll see people who are self-disciplined. They'll go into the gym. They'll go in there and they have that willpower to basically, you know, go in there, do their thing, 
come out with a great workout, feel good about themselves, and they'll do it the next day or the day after that. There are some people, such as myself, I need a good swift kick in the rear to get going. But once I'm there and you turn the power on and my will is activated, that's it. There's no stopping me. But then once that, uh, once I, I stop, now I'm going to need that motivation again. And that's fine. That's totally okay. All right. So understand that it takes willpower to quit. Okay. And it takes willpower to move forward. Okay. Any way you go, your will is being active. Give an example. Sitting down, giving up on life. It's your will and your own power to do that because nobody in the world can tell you what you can and can't do. All right. Everything is your of your choice, is of your doing. So if you I'd just like to connect last week, you know, if I said to somebody, I said to everybody here, if you eat one donut, it's not going to get you fat. If you, ha- you know, one bad meal is not going to get you fat. It's not going to get you out of shape. Uh, and one good meal is not going to get you into shape. It's that willpower that you have. It's the action and the source. All right. That put together is what will produce your results. And it's quite frankly, it's completely up to you. Now, you know, we all have different types of willpower. I mean, I'll give you an example. Okay. Um, one of the challenges I made for myself a couple of years back that really helped me greatly was I want to test my willpower to see how many days I can go without having a bad meal, what they call a cheat meal. My result is I went 62 days. And when a lot of my coworkers and, and friends and family looked at me and said, how in the world did you get the willpower to do it? And I, and I thought about it and I said, well, at the end of this, what do you want to gain? Now, if you want this bad enough, trust me, you will find the, you know, you'll take action and you'll have a source of energy that will keep you going. You have to activate it. There's nobody. Here's the thing. Nobody in the world can do it for you. People can talk to you. They can motivate you. They can do anything you want in this world to have you change. But the only way that you can change is of your own willpower. All right. So I want you to take that and keep that in mind and understand that, you know, it's very, very important for you to develop that. So turn it on not off. And the other thing I want to mention is the third D that I want to talk about, which is dedication. So a lot of people associate, and this is a very huge misconception, is that people take the word dedication and they feel that dedication is obligation. Okay? No, absolutely not. The word dedication does not mean obligation just like discipline does not mean punishment okay so dedication is not obligation what i mean by that is that you're not obligated to do anything in this world nobody can tell you the only way you're obligated to do something is if you're legally all right obligated and you sign a contract or whatever there's an agreement that's on paper And then you have to fill an obligation. But this is not that, right? When you have dedication, dedication is out of your own will, all right? And nobody could take that power away. See how it connects, all right? When you are dedicated to something, all right? And I'll give you an example that I can use on my own because I've been there, I've done it, and I'm still working on it now. When my coach first asked me, you know, I said, what do I need to bring with me? He said, honestly, when I first worked out, first workout, before the first workout, he saw me and he said to me, I said to him, what do I need to bring with me to the gym? He goes, besides being dressed, nothing. And I said, nothing. He goes, oh, no, wait, there is one thing that you need to bring with you, dedication. And I said, Dedication. I said, dedication to what? He goes, you'll see. So 
He says, you come in here, you give me your absolute best. Okay? If you don't if you don't feel like giving me your absolute best, don't come in here. I said, okay. So, went in there, did my workout, and then all of a sudden, I came back. And he said, okay. He goes, you see what you gave me today? He goes, I want you to give me that every time you come in here. And I said, what does this have to do with dedication? And he says, just keep coming in here, giving it 100%. Now, a year later, and about 47, 48 pounds down, in a, no, in about a year, yeah, about 47 pounds down. I looked at him and I said, uh, can I ask you something, James? I said, he's like, yeah, sure. I said, why is it that you never gave up on me? I said, there were so many times I couldn't keep up with you. There were so many times I couldn't do a pull-up. I couldn't do uh, 10 dips. I couldn't do uh, you know, 30, 40 push-ups. Why didn't you just give up on me? He goes, you know why? He goes, every time you came in here, you worked out. You gave me your all. And even when you're not in the gym with me, you still keep giving it your all. You go out there, you work out on your own. And you dedicated yourself to this goal. He said, and I said, well, what does that have to do with it? He says, well, if you didn't show me dedication into investing, it, it, you know, in, in yourself, I wouldn't have you here. You wouldn't be here because your will, all right, would have told me exactly how much you would give. You know, my old Muay Thai coach, uh, Ku Phil Nurse, once said to me, the way you train is the way you fight. So how you prepare yourself is how you're going to fight out there. Now, if you prepare yourself well, you dedicate yourself, you you know, you know work on it every day, you strive to do your best, put your best foot forward, that's going to show in your fight. But if you don't dedicate yourself and you, let's say, half-ass it, excuse my language, if you, let's say... You know, put in the bare minimum, you're going to get what you put in. So if you put in the minimum, you're going to get the minimum. If you put in the maximum effort, no matter what happens, you can't have any, you won't have excuses. You know for a fact whether things worked or not. And that's, a, and everybody's different. We all produce different results. We all approach things differently. All right. So understand if it was easy, Everybody could do it. So tap into that action. Tap into that source. All right? And turn the light on. Don't leave it off. Until then, everybody, don't think it. Ink it. Believe in yourself. Because everything in the world, you can dedicate yourself to. And you're going to see some great results. I promise you. In everything you do, dedicate yourself. And uh, other than that, everybody... Hope you are, are doing really well with your progress. If you need any assistance, if you need my help, uh, if you need anybody in the, you know, uh, Larry's help, my help, hey, we're here for you. Just email us, talk to us at yin and yang podcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's yin and yang podcast at gmail.com. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I hope to bring you uh, another great segment, some great feedback for next week. Thank you so much for listening. Whew. Okay. Well. Another good one. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I really hope that the fans do uh, get something good out of this because we've been doing this for now for almost seven weeks, almost two months. Just and I'm about, really, yeah. I'm really hoping that people will produce some good results because I've, I've had some fans tell me that, you know, they've been struggling uh, with some of the things in their own personal lives. I've had some fans tell me that they're doing really well and they're slowly progressing. And, and that's good. I don't want to hear anybody say, oh, my God, well, I just changed my whole life in seven weeks. No, it doesn't work like that. It's it's a it's a marathon. It's not a race, you know? Oh, absolutely. So uh, that's great, man. I really just hope that it's something that, you know, it's one of my favorite segments to do because I also don't have to hear from you for 20, 30 minutes. 
What? I'm sorry. What? Well, it looks like we don't have time for Q and A. What? Of course, we of course we have time to talk to the people. The people are the reasons why. Now you may hate the world, but I I, I love the people, and and we do this for them. So, um, what do you have on tap? What what are some of the uh, questions we got for the week? All right, uh, we got a couple here this week, and a uh, couple only. Yeah, the uh, the first one here, Tyler Tyler Black from Davenport, Iowa. Whoa, 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 whoa! Did you just say Tyler? black yeah name sounds familiar is this how many people from davenport eh, oh well what are your opinions on intergender matches in wrestling is that seth rollins no no i said tyler black oh 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 i see okay i'm sorry what, what were you saying your opinion on intergender matches in wrestling well obviously larry you're going to disagree with me completely because the wwe can do no wrong Intergender matches are fucking stupid. They're totally dumb. If it, it, listen, I, and I don't want to sound sexist by saying this, but let's be honest here, okay? If a guy beats a girl in an in intergender match, okay, and I, I don't care if it's scripted or not, or blah blah blah, I, I don't give a shit. If a guy beats a girl, you expect it. Because there's just no way that they would be able to lose. It just can you imagine Hulk Hogan losing to somebody like Alexa Bliss? Yeah. Okay. I mean, a, a fucking um, Sable power bombing Mark Merrill. I love you, Mark. Okay, but really, Sable power bombing Mark Merrill. Well, that's happened. Okay. Well, exactly. All right, and that's to be expected in the sense that. In this world, in the wrestling world, there's no way a man will lose to a woman. Because if he loses to a woman, what do you think that the next superstar is going to do? Can you imagine Braun Strowman losing to, like, uh, 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 Peyton? Uh, uh, what's, that, what's that girl's name? Peyton uh, Royce. Peyton Royce. Can you imagine him losing to her in a, a legitly in a ring? Hey, look, I can and see now, some of these guys going down to Ronda Rousey. Okay, well, now, wait a second. It, it, and now, she's a very huge exception, just like Brock Lesnar is a mad, you know, is a huge exception. I mean, I don't even think Ronda Rousey could beat Brock Lesnar. Oh, okay, no, then no, I, don't no. think, I don't think the average man could beat Brock Lesnar. No. And I mean, if you, and, and here's the thing. Now, if you lose to the girl, you're going to be the laughing stock of the company because at, at this point, well, unless you're James Ellsworth and it's scripted because it's funny. And he's or whatever, the reigning and, and defending and, intergender champion. Which is fucking stupid. I, it's it's totally dumb. All right. It I, just, I just don't see. You know, oh, Lord, for it's, a it's, for a record breaking third time, we are going to agree with each other today. But it's not as dumb as this video game outlaw mud show bullshit. I just want to say that. But go ahead, Larry. Um, I don't agree with intergender matches either. I just don't see any point to them. And when we say intergender, we're not talking about mixed tag matches. That's different. We're talking right, about right. guy versus girl. Um, I know over WrestleMania weekend, there was a whole show that was all intergender matches. Um, but uh, personally, I, I just I'm not a fan of it. Um I just I don't I don't get it. The hell's this world it. coming to? We're agreeing for the third time. I'm telling you, man, hell has frozen over. Although with the mixed tag match this year, I really hope that Alexa Bliss kisses um uh you know Braun. Team Little Big. Yes, I mean they are going to go all the way. I would hope so. I I think that they will to the finals sure. of the mix mixed match challenge. Oh, they they'll win it. I hope. <laughs> But anyway, okay, um, that, that's that's one. Okay, our other uh, message here, uh, Black Widow eighty nine. I guess this was a text message or something. What the Fr fuck is with what the fuck? Is a lot of assumed names this week. I from, mean, it's it's from Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, Anthony, is this? Wait a minute, Black Widow. Is this Victoria? No, no, Black Widow eighty nine. From Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, Anthony, what are your first experiences or feelings when going to your first tournament that you can recall for us? 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, first tournament. Um, I was 15 years old. I was doing taekwondo and went to the uh, Empire State Games. And uh, Empire State uh, Regional Championships, uh, It was I was part of a team. And uh, what was interesting about it was that, you know, for a 15-year-old kid, you know, it's not like the way it is now where, you know, everything's overwhelming because, you know, back then, I mean, nowadays, you know, you have YouTube, you could see what, what things have, what people have to go through, you you know, you could search up anything you want. You can, there's so much you preparation, quote unquote, that you could do over the internet now. You can see what the venue looks like. You can see how many people are going to be there or could fit there. You can see wh- who else is competing. Um, you can see what you know what what the rules are. Uh, you know who the judges are. Who's you know, whatever the fuck, right? Now you, I mean, back then when you walked into a place, you don't know how big the venue is. You don't know how many people are going to be there. You don't know who your competition is going to be. You don't know what styles, what they're going to offer. You don't know who the judges are. You don't know anything. You just go in there, you suit up into your uniform, you tape your toes, you tape your hands, you put on your protective equipment, and you go out there and you fight. And, you know, and whether it be full contact, which most of the time it is, uh, whether some people did a full contact with no protection, uh, some people did it on an amateur level, had shin guards and, and arm pads, and that's it. And you either, and it's very simple, you either win or you lose. There's no participation trophy in martial arts, folks. This ain't football. This ain't this ain't any other sport. You either win or you lose. So you don't at that time, and I feel, and I don't want to say anything about the competitors of now, but back in my time, and I don't want to sound like I'm a million years old, but back in the '90s, when you went out there and you, you know, you did your thing, okay. Understand that there, you know. If you lose, you have a lot to lose because all that training went down the toilet. All that preparation went down the toilet. And, you know, your team will not make you feel like a loser. But on that same notion, you know, you, you know, you did, you, you went out there and you did your absolute best and you gave it your all, you know, and it was very overwhelming for a kid because, you know, you don't know a lot about the world at 15 yet, like a lot of the 15 year olds nowadays do, you know, or think that they do. So very different time back then. Okay. But it was awesome, man. You know, being out there and competing in front of people. I never had stage fright. Never, ever oh, got that's nervous. Good. Nothing. I, I ate it up, actually. I, I got the crowd into it. I had them <laughs> clap and shit. It was awesome. Oh, Larry, I want to show you one other thing. What do you got? Like, oh, what is it? That's your nipple. What the hell are you what? looking at? See this? Oh, look at that. Very cool. Okay. That, by the way, these these uh, trophies were a hell of a lot smaller back in these days. Um, the Empire State Games Taekwondo 23rd uh, Intertournament, uh, second place, March 14th, 1992. There you go. Very nice trophy, my friend. Congratulations. Sophomore year of uh, high school. Wow. Cool, huh? I have a second place trophy somewhere, but I think it was too big for uh, me to put it uh, oh. in in the stands in the house because I don't have a mansion and I don't have a you know like a, a, a huge facility like you do over there. It's my like a fucking pool, sanctuary. My pool house houses all of my accolades. Oh, okay. Well, that, that folks, now you know where to rob. Anyway, wait. What? Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. What? What was that? So that's um, that's pretty much it. <laughs> No, Excuse no, me. we have another question. Nah. Don't rob the people. There well, are three questions. Well, according to this, there's only two. The hell are you talking about? So, no, there's one from Monaco Strongbow. Oh. What the fuck? I, what, what the? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, uh, well, yeah, Monaco Strong. What the hell is these? Have these can't be real names this week. This has to be some people. We are not making this up. Yeah, I, um, we're not making this up, folks. Monaco strong. All right, here we go. I okay. mean, we're, we're a little Parts pressed for time right now, but here we go. Okay, all right. Hey, 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 hey. We'll talk about that in a second. I've heard that in Asia, particularly Hong Kong, there are a lot of secret fights or underground fights called Baymo. 
Uh, did they still exist or the stuff of legend or did these really happen? Was it all about how long is this fucking question? What is this all about and what is your opinion on it now? Okay, this is a huge lengthy ass topic. So since Larry's pressing me for time and I don't have the time to do this because Lord knows the retro gamers can go an hour and a half. Better half goes two hours and I have 60 minutes or around 60 minutes to 75 minutes. Allow or uh, whatever the hell. Okay. Um, allow me. Be lucky. To just say, I don't lock this into a, a hard 60 minutes. Keyword being hard for you, huh? Well, come evolution. Oh, okay. Well, uh, point taken. That's the fourth thing we agree on. Um, Whoever the hell Monaco Strom was, what are these people on the witness protection program this week? Are all the three questions of these three people on the witness protection program? A lot of assumed names. I'm telling you, man. This is people are going to think that we made this shit up, like we wrote these questions or we wrote we wrote these names. They don't from parts unknown. Really, from parts unknown. This must this person Monaco Strombo must be watching way too much wrestling. Anyway, um, so. It's a very lengthy, very serious question. I'm going to take it next week, okay, if I may. Okay. So um, why don't we do that because Larry's pushing for time. He's yelling at me in the back. So anyhow, um, Larry, what what is going on with these other 60,000 promotions of uh, promoting shows that you have on your network that they don't promote me so, you know, but I'm giving them the platform to promote them. Go ahead. What's going on? Well, this week and next week is the big hybrid episodes of the Retro Gamers and the Better Half podcast. Um, essentially, it's, I'm going to be honest with you, it's the exact same episode on both shows, just uh, Retro Gamers is going to be a little uh, edited, uh, where the Better Half is is not edited. Um, but check those out. Uh, it's going to be a special Actually, a special episode as well this coming Wednesday of The Better Half. Normally, that's every other week, but in this case, we are going to go uh, this week uh, because the recording went long, so we kind of split it up. But you can check out The Retro Gamers every Tuesday. Check out The Better Half Podcast every other Wednesday normally. And, of course, last week I was sick. I had pneumonia, so unfortunately uh, my... Getting this wrestling podcast off the ground has been a disaster so far. I decided to drop the first episode five minutes after the biggest pay-per-view of the year starts. Uh, and then the following week, I had pneumonia and I couldn't even talk to record. So this week will be episode two of Talking More Wrestling, uh, where we talk the May Young Classic. Uh, and we talk about the uh, upcoming Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, which is this Sunday. Uh, and that's what's happening right now on the More of the Same family of podcasts. Who is your uh, guest this week on Talking More Wrestling? Uh, no one. It's going to be me. What? Yep. What kind of shit is that? What are you talking about? What do you mean? All right. Anyway, so I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Good grief. Okay. Now, Larry, are you ready to promote just when we thought we were out? They pull us back in. Yes. I got a couple of dates here. All right. Well, I got a couple of dates myself, my friend. So you want to start first? Go ahead. Uh, Yeah. Actually, this Saturday... Myself and Frank Messina, host of the Better Half Podcast, will be at the Paramount in Huntington, New York, to watch the Chip Chipperson Podcast live. Um, so you can check that out when it drops on Riotcast Network, a great podcast. Uh, definitely uh, not safe for work, but uh, myself and Frank will be there. Uh, we'll see if we try and hijack the show. And then we have, uh, let's see, September... And then we roll into October. We're going to have Chiller Theater coming up with a huge, huge name that was just announced yesterday (laughs) or the other day, this week, I should say, who will be at Chiller Theater. The one, the only, the ageless Carmen Electra. To rip the page off somebody. Really? Oh, my God. Really? Really? I don't understand what you're talking about with that really thing, but yes. No, I'm ser- no, I'm serious. Is she Carmen really Electra, gonna be there? She's going to be a chiller. Oh well, I now now I know where your money's going to. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and by the way, just announced also in Chiller Theater, Bushwhacker Luke. Yes, I saw that. Yep. Yes, yes, Bushwhacker Luke will be there. 
All right. I heard Bob Backlund um, may have to cancel. Mr. Bob Backlund, number one. And number two, do not exacerbate me, no, young I man. Know. I haven't heard anything about cancellation. Now, the other thing. Is that is that the rest of it for now? Um, at least in the immediate future, yeah. Okay. Well, this weekend, uh, this Sunday, I am going to get corny in Philly. I am going to go and meet Mr. Jim Cornette personally, myself, and I'm going to give him some, uh, actually, some magazines, some wrestling magazines from the 1970s. Oh wow! Uh, when he broke into the business as a g- birthday gift because his birthday's on the 16th. So, or is it the 16th or 17th? Something like that. It's the, the, I think it's the 17th. It's the, the, our episode number one. We celebrate one year, Larry, this Sunday. Do one we? year of the yin and yang. Wow. What do you mean, do we? I don't, don't keep track of this stuff. Nah, you don't keep track of this? Yeah. Oh, that, well, that, you see, fans, that shows you how much care and love and passion he has for doing this garbage time podcast that he has here. Garbage you know what this podcast You know what this podcast is compared to? It's compared to like the fucking news people at like three in the morning who know that nobody watches <laughs> or listens to. That that's what this program is. Thanks a lot, Larry. I appreciate it. If I didn't it. like it, it wouldn't be on the air. Ah, bullshit. Anyway, speaking of assorted bullshit, that's the other assorted bullshit we have for you this week. Larry himself. Now, here's What's- the other thing. Not only am I gonna get corny and Philly but, Larry, I am going to entice you. Oh, by the way, um, yes, uh, Labadee, Haiti, Falmouth, Jamaica, and Cozumel, Mexico, get ready because Chuzilla is going to be in the house. Oh, boy. Because I'm going to go on a family vacay, and it's going to be rocking awesome. So that is going to occur uh, in the week of the 22nd. So it's going to be great uh, for this month coming. But besides that, on a more sociable level, on October 13th, coming back to Monroe, New Jersey, okay, on Saturday, is Legends of the Ring 27. And my friend, if you look at this guest lineup, allow me to extrapolate. Just name a few. Just right? name a few. A few? You can't just name a few after looking at these well, names. you're going to have to. Okay. Hall, Nash, Psycho Sid, Harley Race, Ted DiBiase, and Virgil. <clears throat> Uh, the fabulous Rougeau brothers, who are all the way from Montreal to Memphis. Um, the Beverly sisters. Oh, I'm sorry. The Beverly brothers. Uh, Paul Diamond. Pat Tanaka. Renee Young. Larry Zabisco. King Kong Bundy. Warlord. Right. Flip Gordon. Huh. Uh, the Sinister Minister, Ch- uh, James Mitchell. Uh, uh, Frankie Kazarian. Christopher Daniels. Scorpio Sky? I don't even know who that yeah, is. Yeah, he's part of uh, SoCal Uncensored. And well, if it ain't fucking uh, too cold, Scorpio, he can kiss my ass. He's a better uh, Scorpio. Fuck out of here. Tony Gurria, Tyson Kidd, who I will jump later uh, for marrying what? Natalia. Oh. Okay. And just announced, Larry, this, is, this should definitely have you come here on October 13th. You ready for this one? The Bullet Club. Really? Who from the Bullet Club? The Young Bucks. Adam Hangman Page, Cody, Brandy, and Marty Skrull. Marty Skrull, the villain. Marty Skrull. Skrull. Whoop, whoop. So all five will be there. Interesting. All, as in A-W-L. All, uh, so I wonder, is Larry all in? You know what? And the next... Ah! Uh, the 13th of October? Yes. How far is Monroe, New Jersey from Atlantic City? Uh, if I'm on exit 8, it's on exit like 201. Oh, Jesus. Um, well, I was going to go there myself anyway. Where? To uh, to Atlantic City the same night. Oh, because I may be going to Atlantic City that weekend, but I may have to, uh, I may have to make an exception in the AM and hit up... Uh, Legends, I will get back to you on that. Also, the next day, that reminds me. Actually, there are a couple more dates for me. Uh, My October- friend Big T will be t- will be taking care of us. There you go. October 6th, I will be at New York Comic Con. So come find me. Check that out. And October 14th, I will be at the PlayStation Theater in New York City for back-to-back Mystery Science Theater 3000 Live. And oh, doing- by the way, 
I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, if I'm doing Atlantic City that weekend, that's going to be a busy fucking weekend. Oh, and by the way, um, there's an elite uh, package for the Bullet Club, and there's also a professional photo op with the Bullet Club. The elite package is $200, and the Bullet Club professional photo op is $100. So basically, the deluxe gets you an autograph of each of the six guests, one regular photograph of each of the six guests, or two choice autographs. Oh, a uh, choice of two autographs of each of the guests in lieu of the inv- individual photo op. Um, I'm going to think about it. Your your picture with a full, uh, with a professionally in front of a Bullet Club backdrop, black <laughs> backdrop, uh, with all with all six. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, only two people permit permitted in the photo. In other words, you can't get everybody at once, which is fucking stupid. So obviously the two that you would either get would be the Bucks or it would be uh, Cody and Brandy, right? Or just two pictures with Brandy. No, well, not for me. (laughs) But anyway, fans, I think we've depleted the resources. Larry's getting uh, frustrated back there. Um, Other than that, everybody, I just wanted to say thank you so much on behalf of my co-host, just please take care of yourselves, eat right, work out. Your body is your temple. Be good to one another. Use your left and right turn indicators. And until next week for episode 49. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 49, we are approaching my contract expiration. We're going to see exactly what's going on. And uh, everybody, until then, for on behalf of the entire crew and Larry, tally-ho! You're the best around. Nothing's going